Hello, welcome back. In chapter 2, we have created our first virtual user generator script and that script is basically simulating following steps. We are going to this website called localhost slash module and then we are logging in and then we are entering our username and password and then we are browsing a course and we are logging out. So these are the steps that we did. Login browse and log out and and the equivalent script for that is something like this okay so so this step takes us to the home page and here we go to the login page and here we submit the data that means the whatever the user id and password and the user id and password is 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 like this so value is equal to teacher one and value welcome one is the password right so this is what we did and we browse the test course and then we log out so what is the problem in this script so here is a here, here is a problem like when i when i take this script to the controller and i want to run different users like say you know i want to simulate v1 v2 v3 up to v100 okay so and if i feed them this script what this script is going to do this script is going to always log in as teacher one and welcome one and the second user is going to log in the same way so this is not what is the expected way to test it because whenever we want to emulate 100 100 virtual users we want to give them their username and password and so on all right also like another thing like you know, for example if i want to run this script if I run this script say 100 times so basically what I'm going to do I'm going to run time setting and I'm going to send in the run logic and in, in the run logic I'm going to set it 100 so if for each iteration the current script whatever way whatever way it is written it is always going to take value as teacher 1 and always going to log in as a teacher 1 and my intention here is to emulate hundred different users so let's say in my system what I have I have user like student 1 student 2 student 3 like this student 100 okay and I want them to log in you know I, I want all the students to log in so so what should I do okay so basically the question is how should I enhance the script that you are seeing so that I can achieve my stated goal all right so that is what we're going to learn here okay so here's a, here's a simple approach let's say I want to run this thing hundred times so instead of running it hundred times let's try to run just two times okay and if we can solve for two times then we can solve if we can solve it for two times then we can solve it for hundred times even we can solve for one million users so same technique whatever we will use to solve it for two user is two to uh, you know two iteration is going to be applicable for 100 iterations and million of iterations okay so having said that let's try to uh, take a look how we can do for two times okay so so what i'm going to do i'm going to uh, use a use a for loop to loop you know from line number 16 to line number uh, 68 uh, you know, uh, in, in, I'll, I'll put that in, in, in the for loop. Okay, so so to to use a for loop, first, first I declare an integer. So this is my counter, and and what I'm going to do, I'm going to for i starts from zero, i less than two, i plus plus, then I'll put all this line starting from login until logout inside that for loop okay so so this uh, you know this seems we look looks fine so now if i run this will run two times but remember that for both of the both of the time it is going to use this value as teacher one and look at this so this is basically a parameter okay so what you are seeing here in the in the highlighter session this is a parameter so how about doing something like this how about creating a, a array and uh, and in that array we store 
this value is equal to teacher 1 comma value is student 1 and we will whenever we are going to uh, you know in, in the for loop in the first time we are going to uh, going to access the first element of that array so that whatever that the first element of array will come here in second time is going to come the second element of array so that is how I can do and and to do that what I'm going to do I'm going to declare a character array and this character array is a, is a, is a two, two dimensional array so it says that it has two elements and each of this element has 50 character so first element is value student 1 second element is value teacher 1 and what I'm going to do I am going to I'm going to remove this thing right because I don't want to use any static variable here instead of that I am going to use that dynamic value okay and if I do param i so the first time whenever this for loop is going to be looped the value of i is equal to 0 and and this is going to be param 0 and param 0 is nothing but this element okay and this element is value student 1 so therefore what I'm going to do I'm going to pass to this function web submit data value student 1 similarly in second time it is going to give value teacher 1 and if I run this program now okay so looks like uh, the test has passed now and let's look at the test result just to see like you know what is going on so Jackson summary so we have uh, like you know uh, we have fast login and the first login let's see what web submit data did so if you go to test so what web submit data did see like you know first time you log in as student one now if we go to the second web submit data so which is here and you see that you are logged in at teacher one so do you see then like how by changing the by how by changing this value I got to log different users in okay and now like you know, if you want to do 100 users just increase this this in, just have 100 elements in this array and in and have you know and, and, and loop this for loop to 100 times okay so this is uh, this is as, as simple as that but don't you think that this is kind of a, a functionality that every script is going to do so tomorrow I want to basically you know in the in that in the test course okay so we, we are browsing the course number three right so what about like now you know one user is going to browse 100 cores even want to do randomly so this is a common functionality that we need okay so therefore what HP loadrunner did they have given us some built-in features by which we do not have to write all those C program okay instead of that what we can do we can just use that feature 